Previously, we talked about Year 1 Semester 1 modules for Electrical Engineering in NUS. If you have missed it, here it is. This time round, we'll be talking about modules in Semester 2. Timestamps are here as always for you to skip to the modules that you want to know more about. We'll start off with EE211A, Electrical Engineering Principles and Practices 2. This module is a continuation of EE1111A, which we have covered previously, and will depart from DC circuits and move on to a new chapter of AC circuits. This is where we'll go through sinusoidal waveforms, RMS values, phases, and with the help of the RLC circuit, we will revisit ordinary differential equations. This time round though, we get to use helpful concepts known as phases, where we substitute the differentiated portions with sinusoidal functions, and complex impedance where the currents can be expressed in imaginary numbers. We touch upon high, low, and bandpass filters, get to play with some audio processing, talk about sensors, revisited current dividers, learned more on AC to DC conversion with the use of transformers, rectifiers, and capacitors, dwelled upon DC motors where we learned about electromagnetic induction, back EMF, no load torque and stall current, different types of DC motors, pulse width modulation, and finally, we cover two new components, the MOSFET switch and the H-bridge. Similar to EE1111A, there are e-log books, midterms, finals, and group project work, and this time, we had to design an off-the-grid intelligent street lamp powered by solar energy. Our group was taught by Prof Mahmoon, and no offense to him, he is doing his best making sure that we understand the concepts, but damn are his explanations dry. Honestly, I ran up the lab exercises and started off without his explanations, finished early, and went off to lunch half an hour before the others. Next up, PF1101, Fundamentals of Project Management. This module is a continual assessment type, based around a group project where we have to choose a sector on Singapore's transformation roadmap, come up with an idea, and plan for it using the information taught in lectures about project management. You'll learn about the 9 broad project management areas which are project integration, scope, time, cost, risk, quality, human resources, communications, and procurement, and also on ethics and professional conduct. Tutorials are once every two weeks, and unlike most tutorials where you can opt to skip them, why would you though? This one you can't, as you have to present your progress of your group report in the sections of three to four project management areas. This also means that you have to regularly work on the group report and not leave it till the end of the semester. There is also an individual reflection essay. Nothing much about this, you just have to write about the process of creating the group report and your experiences on it. On top of all of that is the requirement to post on the forums tab five times be it standalone threads or responses from others. Make sure it is meaningful and substantial enough, but other than that, there is nothing much to be overly concerned about. Here are some tips for this module. Work with your group. This module is quite a bit of work, and spreading it out helps tremendously. Also, try to get it done to a quality where you'll be fine with submitting it, since it is a pain to clean up at the end of the semester. Make full use of the sample frameworks provided in the notes, and work with your tutor to get quality feedback and understand what they're looking for in your project. Also, the word limit is a bit tight and you might need to convert some tables into images to get within the limit. Another continual assessment type module is DTK1234 Design Thinking. This module is split into two parts. The first part are the individual learning assignments where you can view a few pre-recorded videos about the philosophy of design thinking and some very general processes, proceed to fill in a PowerPoint file that they've provided, and then submit it back to Luminous. The second part are the in-campus workshops where you get hands-on and make prototypes, draw design drafts, make improvements, gather insights from others testing it, and all sorts of other stuff at a frantic pace. You don't actually have to reinvent the wheel or come up with a million dollar idea, but by explaining your ideas properly, ensuring that you're willing to improve by thinking of possible ways to do so, you'll be able to get a decent grade. One thing to note is that you need to install Microsoft Teams and make use of Miro, a team collaboration software during the workshops. Moving on to GEA 1000, Quantitative Reasoning with Data. This is a statistics module. You'll learn from pre-recorded lectures about the different ways data can be sampled, standard summary statistics like mean, median, mode, interquartile range and standard deviation, rates and probabilities, association between two variables, Simpson's paradox and confounders, linear regression, confidence intervals, and hypothesis testing using one sample t-test and chi-squared test. There are also technical videos teaching you how to manipulate data, hypothesis test, and visualize data using Excel and Radiant. These will not be used for exams, but will come into play for project work, which requires us to answer some questions about a research article and manipulate some provided data to answer even more questions. 
all of which is to be condensed within a 10 minute presentation. It's an okay module overall, nothing much else to talk about it. Finally, MA1508E, Linear Algebra for Engineering. This module is all about matrices, and although it may seem simple at first, it rapidly increases in complexity. It starts off tame with linear equations, Gaussian eliminations, matrix operations, transpose matrices, and invertibility, which is a rather central concept of this module. We then go through determinants, Euclidean spaces and subspaces, linear combinations, span and independence, basis and coordinate vectors, dimensions of vector spaces, and rank and nullity theorem for matrices. It all sounds confusing, but it is not as difficult as it is made to be. The harder parts come in at linear approximation, least square solutions, the Gram-Smith process, orthogonal projection, regular eigenvectors and eigenvalues are a bit easier, but then we get back to diagonalization and their applications, systems of linear differential equation, complex eigenvectors and eigenvalues, repeated eigenvalues, and generalized eigenvectors. It is a whole lot of concepts, not gonna lie, but they are very well paced and there are a few supplementary videos to help you out and you can find them in the multimedia tab on Luminous. They will have more in-depth explanations or proofs that further your understanding of certain concepts, alternative methods that can be easier to use in certain circumstances, or just outright content from the syllabus that could not be covered in the limited time during lectures. Some of the operations in the module are very time-consuming and tedious that we employ the help of MATLAB, a powerful computing software to do matrix multiplication and other manual steps. This is a paid software, but you can obtain the educational license if you are a NUS student. Links in the description below. You can use it in exams, in fact, it is encouraged to do so. You want to use the freed up time to work on the rest of the questions. To be very clear, this is a difficult topic. If you do not revise it regularly every week, you'll start getting lost on the more complicated concepts. And all of the concepts, as you'll come to realize, are interconnected, so once you start getting lost, it will be quite hard to try to get back on track. In terms of assessments, there will be weekly quizzes and also some practice quizzes as well from time to time. Midterms and finals are written exams and you'll have to scan and upload the documents onto Luminous. There is also a group project where we have to present the use of linear algebra in real life scenarios. This was quite a lot of fun actually. Our lecturer, Prof Jonathan, is very enthusiastic and passionate about this module. You would question his ability to always be smiling and he gets very excited over the topic of eigenvectors. The lectures are engaging with polaf quizzes and the concepts are easy to understand with its explanations. There is also a memes thread in the forums tab where you can post jokes relating to the module or Prof Jonathan to take a break from all of this grind. By the way, he'll respond to all of the memes. I mean all of them. I know I'm spending a lot of time talking about this module. This is the longest section in the video and it's taking one whole page on my script. But that is because this is a genuinely good module. You can come to enjoy math, and more than just math, you can learn more about life through the lectures. I'm not kidding. This is one of the best modules I've taken so far. I really do highly recommend it. There really isn't much of a TLDR for this video, but by now, you would have settled into the pace of studying in college, and these modules should be rather manageable. The only curveball would be group projects, where you could be teamed up with some of the most cooperative and proactive people, or people who would leave it to the last minute and finish up through the massive amounts of adrenaline created from dooming deadlines. You could have people you would gel with, and people you just won't be able to work with. That is just how it is. Other than the perfunctory advice of study hard and consistent effort pays off, this is the period of time where there's a lot of art performances and inter-hall games for those staying in hall, and event committee meetings for next year's orientation weeks are a plenty, so my advice is to have proper time management and not overstretch yourself with various commitments. Cut some off if you think that you won't be able to handle it all, have a concrete idea on what your priorities are, and try to get a good balance of studies, social life, and sleep. That's all the modules I took for semester 2. I didn't overload any modules, nor did I take on any extra commitments, so I don't have much to comment on those. If you found this informative, do let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe for more information about NUS. It's Kai, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.